So in this video, we're just going to be looking at some of the user interface elements, the menu bars, where to find settings, all that jazz. But it's also important to start off with a little disclaimer. Things are constantly changing on LogSeq. The developers are developing very quickly. They're responding to user requests. So it might not look exactly the same by the time that you get onto LogSeq. But hopefully this will provide the foundation for you to still navigate through those things yourself because most of the core functionality will remain the same. Let's have a look at how it is currently and you should be able to figure it out from there if things change. The first thing up here is my search bar and my shortcut to open this left menu. And the next button down here is where you select your database. Or as the LogSeq language refers to it, your graph. So if I go here, I could switch to my personal database. As I said, I like to have everything in one place, so it's not something that I do. I'm just creating a new database for a demo purpose. Although I have other demo databases that I sometimes refer to, so that's a very nice little feature. And if I wanted to add a new database, I could say add new graph. And it also enables me to access all my graphs. So here are all the different graphs and I could unlink them if necessary. Just some functionality there. And then this refresh and re-index. Refresh allows me to uh, import changes from my local files. So if something has changed and it hasn't updated for whatever reason, this is where I would do it. I would go to refresh. And then re-index is basically like your off and on again switch, you know, in, in IT help desk style where something is not working quite so great. So it's like, have you switched it off and on again? That's how I think about re-indexing. It just rebuilds your graph. Helpful tool to, to have in the back of your pocket. But if you are uncertain if your files have saved, you can always go and look at them on your local directory and see if what you've added is in the files before you go and re-index because otherwise you might lose some of your information. And I've, I've noticed a few people have had this problem when they're starting up for whatever reason, not sure what their configuration was, but that's just one of those things to be aware of. You can look at your files before you re-index. Moving down the line, the next button over here is your journals and that just takes you back to your journal page. The other way that you can do that is by clicking on that little home button over there. This Third menu option is your flashcards, and this is your space repetition. So if I go and look at my answers, I can see there's the question, what's the largest animal on earth? And then I can use shortcuts, so I can push that button there, and I can see all my, my cards, and this could be very valuable for language learning or studying. Not something that I use extensively, but maybe a little bit more in the future. I'm going to skip the graph view quickly and then your next option here is all pages and this is really great because what it allows you to do is see all the pages that you have in your database and also see how many times you've linked them so if i click on that it will sort it by the number of links and you can see here and if i, I click it again it will reverse the ordering i can see here that my page name mom has five links so that means that it's a, a page that i use quite a bit and that's very useful just to find pages in your database that you either haven't linked and you want to link or to find pages or nodes of information that you are get, gathering a lot of thoughts around. So that's a nice functionality. Also it shows you when it was created and updated. And this function here allows you to remove orphan pages. These are basically pages where there are no links to those pages and they are empty. So those pages that I deleted were from the examples that I used earlier in the series and I haven't got them there anymore. So just remove that information. That's just a nice way to clean up your database. I can also look at all my files and see exactly where they are located on my drive. Again, just nice functionality there. If I go to my graph view, you can see here that I've only got a few pages that are actually linked together. So what the graph does is it links your pages that are related to one another. So mom is a node because it's a page, but it's not linked to any other pages. It's only linked to the journal. So if I wanted to link it to recipe, let me just link it over there. And I now go back to my graph view. You can see that that link has been built. So pages are nodes and the links or the lines are where those two pages have been linked and the graph view can help you uh, navigate your database later down the line it's just a nice way a nice entry point into your database sometimes too there's a menu over here which shows nodes and 
I don't like to have my journals showing in my graph. It will add all the journal pages, so the date pages, into my graph as well. So if I do that there, you can see I've got the 29th of uh, November, which is linked to all those different concepts. And I can, and the 28th of November is also linked in there. And the built-in pages are some of LogSeek's um, standard pages. You can see there to do be a so looking at the right sidebar again let me just go to my home journal there this contents over here is another form of entry point into your database so i've got favorites i've got recent or i've got contents just a, a way for you to structure your information so that you can access it very easily page graph this shows all the different links that you've made on a page. So my page in focus here is the 29th of November, and it shows all the different links that I've made there. This can be very useful if you've got like lots of information in bigger pages. The help button takes you to different resources. You've got short keyboard shortcuts, documentation. If you don't know how to do something, it's a great place to go and find some documentation. There's also unofficial documentation that you can find on awesome LogSeek here, which is like, a bunch of resources that the developers have put together and then a great place to ask your questions is the discord community really helpful lots of people who know a lot about what they're doing there like I've, I've realized that the real heroes of the open source community are people who answer on the forums and yeah they're very very knowledgeable taking the time to write out answers requires them to like really have thought through things in a, in a very detailed way and there's some real heroes on there who are answering a lot of questions the last thing that I wanted to look at is just this menu setting here or the settings here and you can see there that I've got settings plugins and themes are in when you activate developer mode you can turn developer mode on in the advanced setting over here but this just enables you to change your themes it enables you to change some of your workflow preferences so for instance turning that tooltip on that's when you can start having the preview for your different um, your different link pages if i go back to settings there and editor i changed my preferred workflow to to do doing done rather than now later done you can change your preferred date format i wouldn't change the preferred file format because markdown is very universal org mode is not so universal but yeah lots of cool settings over there there's uh, you got, can customize your shortcuts and then as I said here, the advanced settings where you can activate developer mode and access plugins and all that jazz. There's some great plugins, but it's not things that you have to worry about when you're getting started. This is really just showing you the bare bones of what you need to get started in LogSeq. Having said that, the last video is going to look at some tips for setting yourself up for success. I think there are a couple of things which are key to remember going into your first database and that will just help you to find things later on because the whole thing here is retrieval and being able to think in this integrated environment.